Look at um, where you're at. It looks so warm. <laughs> that's the difference between uh, Canada and California, right? <laughs> oh man! Uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen, and I'm the host of the In My Element podcast. I think it's the world's only podcast that happens in a Honda Element. Uh, we have a super special guest. We have Jimmy from Living in a Tesla on YouTube. Very on the nose name there but <laughs> hello <laughs> dude jimmy so um i i just randomly came across your channel i was like just you know searching some random stuff and you popped up and with the name i was like okay i gotta click you're like in the future you know it's like, like you have the electric version of van life dude um, um yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> so I, I i wanted to ask like how, how did it all begin why did you start living in your tesla yeah, um, I've been always wanted to do the van life lifestyle, uh, but before like knowing Tesla exists, I was um, hoping to get like a Sprinter or like a VW van and just travel across the country. Uh, and but then because of the gas price, it's like getting higher and higher every year um it it just wasn't a really long-term financial uh it, it yeah long-term financial good thing to to do um so so i decided to get a tesla and uh the upfront cost is higher but then uh because i'm not paying for gas uh i'm and also there, there are no maintenance at all, almost. Uh, so it's like much cheaper uh, in in a long-term cost perspective. And also the other aspect is the environmental reason. Um, it is great to know that there is a significantly less uh, negative environmental impact to the world. Um, while I uh, cruise around silently uh, in nature. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a quite a therapeutic moment to be able to drive around in a forest with without making any noise. Mm. And you can really hear uh, the birds singing, the trees, the winds moving around. Yeah. Wow, I mean, that's got to be a surreal experience for the first time. You're just like, wow, it's so quiet. I can like hear nature just cruising down. Can you go a little deeper? Like, what, what, what was the, what was it about van life that, like, made you want to try it? I mean, like, yes, there's the ability to like go out and explore, but like, what really captured you to make you start? Yeah, um, when I was younger. Um... I was pretty inspired by a landscape photographer. He uh, he quit his job and then sold everything, sold his house and just travel across the world. And just the idea of being able to call anywhere home uh, is super fascinating. Mm. And 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 it feels mentally it feels really free not being not tied into a single location uh, and just being able to grab your backpack go wherever you want anytime um, yeah that just like the freedom that you speak of is is what I think van life is all about it's like hey you know what I'm tired of Vancouver. I'm going to drive to BC <laughs> like you did, right? Like, I'm just yeah. going to do it Toronto. and explore. Yeah. Oh, Toronto, yeah. pardon, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I'm i American, so sometimes my geography is a little off. <laughs> oh, no, that's totally fine. <laughs> my geography is um, not good. <laughs> but I, I think that's kind of the, the essence of, like, the whole van life experience is, like, you know what, like, 
I'm going to drop everything and I'm just going to go to a different location to explore. And you, you have a very unique opportunity because you're all electric, right? So you don't have to worry like, okay, it's going to cost me this much money to get to this location where traditional van lifers in like sprinters or whatever are, they have to really like calculate. It's like, can I actually make it to that location now? Because gas is so crazy. Um, so I think that's one super cool thing about you and living in your Tesla. Um, at any moment, were you ever um, afraid, like starting this journey? Did, did, was it ever like, you know, did you ever like second guess your decision or? Yeah, uh, when I first started, uh, I didn't, didn't really second guess my decision, but in the beginning, it was really difficult uh, because I started at a time that that things weren't really opened. Uh, I started mm. last year in February, and at the time here in Canada, a lot of places are still closed down because of COVID. Um, and and it was quite difficult living out of a car. So it, it like the biggest issue is not having a bathroom, <laughs> uh, but everything else is like perfect. Trust. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was like difficult to just use the bathroom the gas stations weren't allowing you to use it and Damn. and like gyms were like closed down everywhere um so it was really tough uh physically and mentally at the time and and i also began with the uh tesla model 3 uh it's much smaller than what i have now in the model y um, the space to sleep in wasn't the most comfortable because there was like a huge giant middle bit, middle, uh, metal piece mm. like in the trunk area and my knee would like keep hitting it when, I, when I'm sleeping at night. Um, yeah, but other than that, uh, it was really amazing to be able to spend time in nature and go hiking explore different trails uh different parks so so <laughs> sorry if this is too much so like what did you end up doing to use a restroom i mean like did you dig a hole did you find a bush i mean <laughs> no uh well for peeing i i do keep a bottle in my car Okay. Uh, like for us male, it's like pretty simple. You just, <laughs> you just pee in it uh, and then, you know, empty it wherever you go. <laughs> uh, but for like um, pooping, uh, I sometimes I go to Walmart, uh, which, which, yeah, which, yeah, they, they were opened quite mm. open at the time. And, and then certain malls were also opened um but just a little bit restricted in hours uh so i have to really plan my daily schedule um to make sure that i <laughs> get things out <laughs> before uh things are closed at night and and for shower i just use baby wipes um okay for as long as I could. Uh, the longest I've gone without shower was about a week. And then after a week, it was really not feeling <laughs> great. And, and I found out that uh, in truck stops, uh, you can pay for a shower. And those weren't really as restricted at the time. Um, yeah, so there were ways to get shower done. Um, just quite limited um and then in february it was like still pretty cold um, um so i was mainly using like truck stops for shower and uh, as the weather got warmer um i do have a shower kit uh and i'll just find a park somewhere and go into go in between the trees and, <laughs> and just shower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I, I was actually kind of curious about that because you're in Canada and obviously it gets super fucking cold. So 
like how, how do you how do you met like I'm in California. Weather's great, right? It's, it's like 70 degrees most of the year. But I, I can't I, I can't imagine like how you do it when it's so cold out, you know? How does how does that work out? Do you have like a nice sleeping bag or Yeah, I do have a sleeping bag. And and then uh, over there over here the blue one is my sleeping bag and then my mattress and my blanket. Uh, so the sleeping bag really keeps me warm uh, for like minus 10 celsius i think that's like maybe 14 degrees fahrenheit something like that oh my uh, god <laughs> it's so cold dude yeah it was i was able to sleep comfortably except my face uh, it gets mm. a bit warm um, i mean a little bit too cold uh, but my body my head were quite warm um but one really difficult situation in Co is, is, uh, like the ne- like the next morning, is so cold that you don't really want to get out of your sleeping bag, and and it's just really mentally challenging to, to get things moving, get things going. <laughs> uh, so I did some research on your YouTube channel, and I saw you did like a a week long cold challenge to yourself where you're like can you can you tell us about that yeah the motivation to do that was uh, mostly inspired by the Wim Hof method and Wim Hof himself Um, I have been following him for quite some time but uh, have never really done the cold therapy I'm not sure cold uh, I, I've been like doing the breathing practice like from time to time, but I haven't really done the cold part. So it was a a way to push myself um, internally to do something really uncomfortable. I was able to feel like the differences after doing the whole week uh, from my body. I felt achieved, uh, mm. but also I felt happier and yeah it, it, it felt really great uh, being able to do something that I thought I would never be able to do. Uh, the location that I did my cold challenge was like in uh, in the waterfall uh, so hiking there every day uh, allowed me to meet, to meet people along the hike and and we were able to have some really interesting conversations about life and stuff. <laughs> so you think the the happiness came from kind of like overcoming that challenge of like being afraid of the cold and then like entering the cold, even though you were afraid and like kind of staying with it. And then I, I assume you, you did the breathing method while you're like kind of in the cold. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. I remember uh, every time when I reached to the waterfall, I stand on the rock and I looked at the, I stared at the water for for like quite a long time and just trying to trying to get around my like get around in my head to really force myself into it. Um, and uh, and also the hike helped a lot a little bit as well. Uh, I think it was like a six mile in to the waterfall. So after arriving to the waterfall, like there is an aspect of like um, like I've already got to this point. I shouldn't really give up right now. I should just finish it up and. <laughs> and yeah and and keep going it's quite dangerous i i I would say you know like going there and like to the freezing cold and then it's it's not just like a a 20 minute walk right it's it's like a two two hour two and a half hour journey just to get to the destination and then once you get to the destination you got to freeze your ass off under this waterfall (laughs) and then you got to walk hike back while you're soaking wet and like your socks are wet 
And you know, if, if you're not, if something happens and you're not prepared, like you could be in serious danger if you're stuck out there, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, if like, uh, if anyone is planning to do something like that, I would really suggest that people really uh, do a lot of research beforehand and then uh, start from something small like a cold shower first and then get to know your body and see how how much you are able to handle uh, but it could it could get quite dangerous um when when i did mine it wasn't in the middle of winter uh it was like around some summer and fall uh so there were sunlight that is able to, to like uh, uh, like keep me a little bit warmer like after I get out of the water um, but the water is still quite cold it, it was most likely like below freezing uh, because the waterfall is like constantly chilling the water mm, yeah I, I I had a question kind of queued up um... And I'm curious if you're if you're gonna be able to share, um, what's your love life like? You know, like you you live you live in a van, uh, in a in a Tesla, um, and you're traveling around. But um, what's that like? Have have you been able to like go on dates? Have you have you brought anybody home? I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how does that work? Well, I would say my love life is like almost non-existence <laughs> um i have been on uh dating apps and i have met a couple of people um but it, they were both like really we were mostly just getting to know each other and just treating uh each other as friends uh but we didn't get get into the deeper level to to know each other better yeah <laughs> uh, that's that's one thing about living inside of a, a vehicle that it's quite difficult you know <laughs> unless the person that you're dating happens to have like an apartment or a house or whatever then it becomes a little bit more convenient yeah um well yeah but uh although like my currently like I don't, i'm not in any type of relationship but i do hope to perhaps in eventually meeting someone on a hike and and i think when that moment happens uh it's a quite powerful connection yeah <laughs> so We'll, we'll see. Uh, love it. Love is a crazy thing. It just like it strikes when you least expect it, you know. And I, I, I feel like regardless of the like living situation, like when you meet the right person, you just you meet them, you know. And I, I don't know how that happens or or why that happens, but when it does, like no, I feel like it's it's kind of like an unstoppable force, you know. It's it's just gonna happen regardless. Yeah. Yeah uh when the moment is right and and it's also really important that i like myself is on a really uh at a level that is i don't know like really really comfortable of myself and and i think that energy will transcend to or like to to others well, from what I've seen, you're a super confident guy. Like you've done some some things that only someone who is very confident can do, such as transition the banana story. <laughs> okay, so so let, let, let me set the scene. Okay, uh, it looks like you're you're in the city, you're in your Tesla, right? And you've got your roof rack up top, and you've got the frunk open, and it's just packed full of bananas 
just bananas everywhere. More bananas, like huge boxes of bananas. And you have a sign, which I think said like, hey, like come to me and buy bananas off me. What, what, was, what was going through your, your head when you, when you were doing that? I, I, like, I thought it was fascinating. Please tell us more. Yeah, um, that was more like a fun, fun and ridiculous <laughs> video idea that I had. Um, selling bananas out of a Tesla, and the sign I had was saying, uh, "Bananas from Earth." Mm. And yeah, at first I was I wasn't really expecting much attention um and but 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 then it was like really um but people were like really stopping by and and curious to know what's going on and they were interested in buying bananas as well uh, and my, I was selling them for pretty expensive because like considering what you, you could get from Walmart. Uh, I, I got mine from Walmart too. So, so it doesn't make sense for at all for people to buy them. Uh, yeah, but people were, were really supportive. Um, and, and then some people who passed by were really curious about the uh, electric vehicle in general. And they were, uh, they asked questions, uh, questions about EVs and, and, and the potentials of EVs. Um, yeah, and, um, I'm not sure. It was yeah. It was just a fun little thing. <laughs> yeah. oh, did you have any goal in mind? Like, were you were you trying to make money? Were you trying to like put yourself in an uncomfortable position? Like, yeah, it was an uncomfortable position. Uh, but at the time, I was just starting my YouTube channel, YouTube channel, <laughs> and and I was thinking of. I was trying to think of ideas um, that could maybe capture a little bit attention, uh, something that isn't really following the norm. Norm mm, is that mm. the word? <laughs> something weird, something strange. Um, but it ended up a quite interesting experiences experience, uh, and and it was cool to meet people on the street yeah we're back <laughs> technical difficulties running out of disc disc base um, but here we are um so we were we were talking while i was getting everything fixed up um about how you access the internet um and we're both using hotspots and you were saying that there's like a, a monopoly there in canada yeah it's like du du duopoly um, there are, I think the main two companies uh, are Bell and Rogers, and then there are a bunch of smaller brands that that's making the market look, or making consumers look. Uh, wait, no, making making it seems like they are not the only two companies in charge of the entire cell network. Uh, but all the smaller companies are also owned by the two companies. And uh, I was just telling Stephen that um, I used to live in the States. And at the time I had T-Mobile. Uh, and it was like, it was quite a big difference uh, of what the car carriers in the States offer. Um, most of them are uh, most of them do offer unlimited data and even even if you run out of data the speed is still pretty fast uh here here currently in canada once you run out of your set data uh the speed decreases dramatically mm. and it's like crap you can't it takes 
so, so long to use Google and and just normal maps and mail. Yeah. So it's un it's unlimited, but once it gets to that threshold, it's like useless, basically. Yeah, basically. Oh my god. Um, so what are your future plans um, as far as YouTube go? I'm really curious. Um, do you see that as like a career path forward? Is it is it a hobby now? Like, how do you go about making money um, while you're living in your Tesla? Yeah, uh, I uh, I'm hoping to I'm attempting hoping and attempting to turn my YouTube channel into a career or a self sustaining income source. Um, it's picking up slowly, um, um, but on the side, I also have uh, video editing jobs for incomes. Uh, sometimes I also do like food deliveries just to pay for mm -hmm. daily expenses. Um, yeah, so aiming to make YouTube out of a career. I was wondering about your editing skills because it's awesome. Like I see some of the edits, like I saw one where you had like, you kind of pull the screen across while you're supercharging. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's like so creative. And I'm like, he must have some experience doing this because it's awesome editing. Thank you. Yeah, I do have a background in video and photography. Um, I used to work for uh, advertising agencies. Mm to make like really short short like looping videos for brands social media um yeah and i guess i also had a little bit of training uh for video editing as well um yeah <laughs> so on that note, while we have you guys here, make sure to subscribe to Jimmy's channel so we can help him along on his goal to make his YouTube like self-sustaining. And obviously he's a very interesting person. He's got a lot of personality and it's a great follow. So make sure you do that. Thank you guys. And if you guys <laughs> are new to Stephen's channel, don't forget to subscribe. As well. <laughs> yeah. um, so, well, I want, I want to wrap this up, but I want to know if you have like a, any questions for me? Uh, yeah. Um, well, my main, I guess, a lot of things that I'm experiencing applies to you as well. And, but I guess I'm more curious of your home, your car. And, and uh, when I was doing some Google search on the Honda Element, I did see some of them had, has the pop-up roof. Mm. Are those like third party made or are those like out from the manufacturer? So that's a third party. It's uh, called the Ursa Minor E Camper. And basically, I'll, I'll see there's like a, a moon roof right here in the back, right? So, so basically, you kind of enter from here and it's like a big tent. A couple of my friends have them and you can sleep like two people. The only thing is like, it's like seven to ten grand to, to put that on so you know that the vehicle itself maybe cost that so it, it's a big purchase if you're if you're going to go that route but um it's one of the reasons i love the element because it's like so big yet so compact right it's like so boxy so you have a lot of the the framing that you can do like with a van but in a smaller you know uh, size yeah yeah, it must be great. Like, it feels great to be able to like sit in your car without your head hitting the ceiling. Uh, I'm not able to do it in mine because I, I made, I mean, I uh, raised the bed platform to include a kitchen and a lot of storage. Um, so most of my uh, activities has to be done like outside of the car. Uh, and when I'm editing, I just sit on my driver's seat or sometimes I go to the library uh, to, to get, get get some work. <laughs> I, I, I used to do that a lot in the coffee shops, but I've changed my setup a little bit since then. So I've got like a bit more space to like, you know, just sit in the back. But the bad thing is now I'm more comfortable back here. So I, I spend less time outside of the van. 
you know so it, it it's I, I i'd still prefer it this way but yeah there are pros and cons to that you yeah. know yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah right. and you were just talking about income uh mm. i noticed that you are a yoga instructor yes is that your main source of income for uh for your van life yeah yeah so i i because i'm a yoga instructor i'm kind of planted in one area mostly um so yeah i i have a couple yoga studios that are close by which i shower at um and then i teach classes there every every once a, a few times a week you know and in, be, in between that i kind of hang out out of like parks like this one and um yeah it, it works for me and then with being a yoga instructor i can just kind of like sub out my classes if i ever want to go and travel somewhere and then i could come back and there's work but ideally kind of like you i want to make my youtube more of a, a sustainable income source so then i can kind of be more full time out and about you know not not fully like locked into one location but for now in the past three years it's been it's been pretty awesome actually and then i've just kind of all the money that i i make i, I kind of just throw it into crypto and hope for the best <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Great. It's okay. oh Fantastic. man yeah <laughs> you know YOLO. <laughs> Yo yolo i'm i'm aping in man <laughs> yeah, okay um, awesome jimmy dude hey thank you so much man I, I really appreciate you coming on um i i gotta say again everybody make sure you subscribe um because his channel is gonna blow up he's got great video editing he's got great storytelling so I'm really excited to see um, where you're at next year. Maybe we can come on again and we can do another follow-up. Yeah, thanks for having me on your podcast, uh, Stephen. Uh, I would really, really love to visit the States again. I'm hoping to maybe come down next year. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> and, and if when I do, uh, let's go on hikes. And yeah. Let's explore, explore nature together. Let's do a cold plunge. Let's, oh yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's go in the middle of the winter into the ocean and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, Jimmy. Hey, everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel as well. And. Uh...